Hello, my name is Shanila Kojamuji, and I'm a postdoctoral scholar at the University of Pennsylvania's Program on Democracy, Citizenship, and Constitutionalism. The editors of Discourse have asked me to talk briefly about my recent paper entitled Envisioning an Alternative to the Neoliberalization of Education in the Global South, the Aga Khan's Philosophies of Education. In this paper, I focus on recent transnational campaigns for girls' education, in which we observe a conflation of development goals with economic rationales. I show that often in these campaigns, girls are primarily articulated as economic actors, be it promising consumers, labor needed to enhance GDP, or even as entrepreneurs. And in the campaigns, the purpose of education is often reduced to producing waged labor for the national economy. It is against this background that I highlight the need for counter discourses to disrupt this reduction of individuals and social projects to economic logics. In the paper, I delineate one such alternate framing of education by foregrounding the narratives of the Shi'i Muslim leader, His Highness the Aga Khan. In doing so, I'm also attending to the call of decolonial scholars to excavate epistemologies of the global south in order to pluralize our knowledge fields. The Aga Khan is the leader of 15 million Ismaili Muslims across the world. As part of his mandate, he has established and leads an extensive network of development agencies, which are collectively called the Aga Khan Development Network. The network is primarily located in the global south and focuses on a wide range of issues from health, education, cultural revitalization, and infrastructure development to architectural innovation, tourism, and industrial promotion. For the purpose of this article, I coded and analyzed over 30 public speeches and interviews by the Aga Khan between 1994 and 2015 on the topic of international education. In the paper, I outlined three salient themes pertaining to theorizations of the self, community, and meaningful life that emerged as a consequence of my analysis. First, the Aga Khan's work is deeply influenced by conceptualizations of knowledge and development as espoused within Muslim epistemologies. He emphasizes the importance of non-economic dimensions of life as being equally important as economic ones to enhancing the quality of life of people and communities in the global south. Therefore, when he discusses the purpose of education, we find that he argues for moving beyond economic metrics. Second, in the Aga Khan's narratives, I found that the individual appears as intricately dependent on and entangled with families and communities. This is important because often empowerment campaigns center the individual as a site of empowerment. Thinking about broader narratives, thinking about relationships as the Aga Khan talks about, transforms this conceptualization of empowerment. Such conceptualizations then inevitably entail interdependence, trust, and an effort to know and live with the other. And it's precisely due to that reason that across the speeches I analyzed for this article, I found that the notion of pluralism emerged strongly not only as a value that schools should seek to imbue in students, but also as a dimension, as a value that actually can address the oppressive dimensions of living. Finally, towards the end of the paper, I consider what the affordances of the Aga Khan's thoughts for curriculum and teaching, not only in relation to school, but also international development projects. Overall, in my article, I deploy the analytics afforded by feminist, post-colonial, and decolonial theories to envision alternate approaches to international educational development in the Global South. Thank you for reading.